presented by Tide. Mm. We're opening our phone lines to callers who have something to say about their favorite teams. Remember when we used to do this? Sure. This, this You're having a fun right conversation yeah. that, right? <laughs> right? Uh, we're going to talk about our favorite teams. Let's see which super fan will call in today. We got a cold call. Okay, the phone's ringing. Sounds like, hello? Hello? Sal Willow from Sausalito, and this isn't a fake call like GMFB. No, faithful till I die, real thing. And Peter says, Sean McVay tells me, flying coach, incredible signal call. Well, Peter, how about Kyle Shanahan? He can scheme anyone open. He'll be keeping defenses guessing whether it's Jimmy G or is Trey Lance, which Trey Lance, by the way, showed me something in that second half. Debo Samuel is balling out right now. The D-line doing his part against the run. Kay was even highlighting it on her, my cousin, Benny, skid as judge, or whatever that was. <laughs> that was cute. Uh, Bosa getting his legs under him. Niners will surprise people like Mike Rob's wife surprises him. And like Kyle Brand's former boss, I'm out late. <laughs> hey! Sal! Okay, Sal. Sal's I, amazing. Sal, you're cool. I've not even seen my cousin Vinny. I wasn't doing anything but being myself. Right. Thank you very much. And it sounds like you, a Niners fan who talks nothing but Niners at nauseum 24 hours a day in every news hit ever. You know Sal? A lot of faith. I do. I've heard of him before. We are friends on Twitter. Oh. He has a lot of faith in his team heading into a tough division matchup this weekend. So, guys, what can the Niners do to hand the Cardinals their first loss of the season on Sunday? All right, Sal is a, it's an everyday caller. Epic mustache, Sal, well, too. What are they called, the smackdown? <laughs> the smack-off. He's won 20 smack-offs. Good night now. He's, he's great. Um, That's great. Smack -off. That was Will Silva. Okay. That's our guy, uh, and he's a Niners fan, and obviously he wants to talk about the Niners, and this yes. is the biggest game that they've had all year here with the it's Cardinals. It's not Will Silva. It's, it's Will Sal Silva. Welva. That's the whole gag. I don't, I don't know. It's Will Silva, right? <laughs> I don't know. Um, they run the ball. They got a scheme, and this is like a whole week of Kyle Shanahan having Trey Lance now and saying, okay, now what can I do with my new Ferrari? They didn't game plan for him last week for the full playbook. They have it this time. This this Arizona defense, they've been really good. Mm -hmm. But if they run the ball like 60 times, they've got a shot here. I mean it that, that many times. 60. Like, I mean it. Like, just run the heck out of the ball. This might be one of those games. Remember Garoppolo threw it eight times in the NFC Championship? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It might be that. That's where I was hey, going. so crazy. Trey, we might need you to throw it five times. It might go huh. Tebow style here. We're going to scheme it up. We're going to run. And we're going to use our running backs. And we're going to get you out there. If Trey Lance runs the ball 20 times, I wouldn't be shocked. Keep the ball out of Kyler's hands. Control the ground. And just dominate the line of scrimmage. With that offensive line, they can do against any other team in the NFL. Yeah, dominate the line of scrimmage. Um, yeah. <laughs> Trey Lance, 20 cares. Yeah, Peter, you're, you're speaking my language right there. To me, that's what's going to give this team a chance against the Arizona Cardinals. Um, <laughs> possibly Kyler just not playing well. Mm -hmm. They're just having one of those days. But uh, without Jimmy G there, without um, Trey Lance getting even more reps, I mean, Trey Lance just seems a little raw right now. They got to run the ball and control the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. and defensively, they got to get after Kyler. Listen, Kyler came on the show. He loves Mario Kart. He said his guy he likes to drive with is Toad. <laughs> the Niners need their, their Bowser, or they need their DK, and his name is Nick Bosa. Joey Bosa's making all the news this the week and all the quotes, and the Chargers are awesome. Nick, this is a game for you, dude. You got to chase Kyler like and just knock him right off a of Rainbow Road or Luigi's Parkway or whatever the hell they were called. <laughs> this is, needs to be the Nick Bosa game because uh, they didn't beat Russ. They didn't beat Rodgers, and this is the reason you were drafted. You chased that human laser pointer called Kyler Murray. Two sacks from Nick Bosa, and they can win this game. Short of that, I don't think they can. You need to force Kyler to fall into bad habits, right? He's thrown an interception every game until last week. Mm. you got to use your boy Bosa to sort of make him uncomfortable because this offense, if it's not making mistakes, mm. is, I think, impossible. They're, to they're impossible to stop, and when you get to Kyler, you got to let him know that you got to him. I was going to say. you got to hit him a little bit. So, I got to Toad. A little body on him. <laughs> yeah, at GMFB, that is all. Our cold call with Tide. Love this orange one. All right, time for Will Selva on the West Coast with the news. Will, did you hear our guy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what guy? Will. <laughs> what guy? Sal Welva. <laughs> oh, you mean the caller? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sal yeah. Welva. No, he seems like he's a, he's a nice, positive, well-informed fan. He's not like the unhinged Benny from Hohokus that we hear from that's no. always so negative. Okay. So I, I, I like Sal. You know, uh, I'm definitely with Rack him. Uh, now, strictly Rack coincidental, friends. Strictly <laughs> coincidental here. 
Uh, my first story is about San Francisco and the whole quarterback yeah. situation. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do have to go there. It's it's a story, people. Come on. We have to tell people about it. There's a lot of interest about whether well, it's going to be Trey Lance, whether well, it's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. Well, we can tell you this, that Jimmy G did not practice yesterday, and that does not bode well for his availability. This would be the second straight day that he has had to deal with his cap contusion. Head coach Cal Shanahan has not ruled out Jimmy G from starting Sunday against the Cardinals. Now, if Garoppolo can't go, rookie Trey Lance would get his first career start. Dolphins players recently teaming up with local students of the Jason Taylor Foundation to paint a mural at Hard Rock Stadium. Designed by local artist Serge, the players and students receiving painting lessons as they learn the inspiration behind the mural curated to represent the culture of Miami. And Sunday, we get a rematch of the 2020 AFC Championship game when the Bills visit the Chiefs once again. Of course, KC winning that game after trailing early, but this time, this time the difference will be GEHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium. Will be absolutely rocking at full capacity, but wide receiver Stephon Diggs not worried about the noise. I'm all about the hostile environment. Um, I'm pretty chill right now, but as far as like when it's time to, when it's time to go, I love everything about it. I, I love not being able to hear. You know what I'm saying it's more so reacting than just hooping. It's just something about those moments that you get like a little rush. You know what I'm saying, and as far as like trying to silence the crowd and being on the other end, uh, it, it's always quiet. You know what I'm saying it's so loud that it, I mean it's kind of weird to say, but it's so loud that it's quiet. You know what I'm saying you don't got nothing but your thoughts and really just the man in front of you. It's a good feeling, though. I wish you all can experience it. <laughs> <laughs> Diggs hearing the silence among the noise. Make sure to keep it here. More GMN. NFL Game Day Kickoff, Sunday at 7 a.m. on NFL Network. Let's go to Miami. Anybody in? Oh, yeah, I'm well, in. Let's, let's go. go. The Dolphins have dropped three in a row. Woof. Next up, it is there cross-state rival the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the latest on this matchup from woof to wolf. <laughs> Here's Cameron. Good morning, Kay. The big storyline last week, Tom Brady versus Bill Belichick. An underrated storyline this week, Tom Brady versus Coach Brian Flores. 15 years together in New England, and Brady said this week that he estimated maybe 1,500 practices they went against one another, and they're both big competitors. So we asked Flores this week, is there anything that you have on Brady that can help you? And he said with a wry smile, there's no confusing that guy. He's seen everything. Maybe a little gamemanship because the Dolphins blitz more than any team in the league, and I expect them to throw a lot of different looks at Brady. This defense will have to carry a big load for a struggling offense that's 31st in total offense and 31st in scoring offense so far this year. Their starting quarterback, Tua Tungavailoa, has been out since week two with those fractured ribs, and there's optimism he'll return next week versus the Jags, but for this week, it's Jacoby Brissett that'll have to lead the show. So, a lot of pressure on that defense, and I asked one of their key members, linebacker Jerome Baker, about Brady, and he said something funny. He said, early in my career, I was starstruck. He was a guy that I played with, with Madden, but now I'm just out to ruin his day. Okay. Mm, cool. Thanks so much, Cameron. Week 5's chock full of great games on Sunday, kicking off at 9.30 a.m. <coughs> Eastern. Jets Falcons over in London so let's work through as many as we can and give us your thoughts with a round of Mad Minute. What happens here? Michael Robinson, 60 seconds go on the clock. You guys share that minute to dish out and spit out the biggest things you are looking for. So let's go with that fight for supremacy in Florida mm -hmm. as okay. the Dolphins take on the Bucks. This one in Tampa. And you guys heard Cameron Wolf. What are you excited for, Peter? You know, it's it's a shame that Miami doesn't have a passing offense right now because I feel like the three of you could play corner and safety and I could be the, <laughs> for the Buccaneers right now. Don't do them like The Buccaneers are so depleted. Sherm. Yeah, Sherman was, hey, people were like knocking Sherman and the, the Patriots threw at him. Sherman showed up on Monday yeah, and was like, like you're playing, has, has been sitting on the couch for a day. And he's their number one corner. So Tampa yeah. might have problems with the defensive backfield. This is a great matchup for Tampa because the Dolphins, they haven't been able to move the ball through the air. So, Kay, if you're suiting up at strong safety, it might be an upgrade from what okay, Tampa's man. got. Still might get the win. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Thanks, Let's go. <laughs> I like this matchup. Um, I look at Tampa Bay. I think offensively, they got to get their run game going. They got to get Leonard Fournette. They got to get the run game going. They only average about 70-something yards, uh, you know, 
per game, but whenever they get into these high scoring type games, when they have an offense that their defense can't stop, they got to make sure this run game is ready to go. So I think I look at this game for Tampa Bay to just get their game right, all right, as they move on. Go Bucks. <laughs> Two seconds. <laughs> Miami, this is a playoff game for you. Give me something. I don't know if it's a good thing if Tua is coming back, but we're out of time. Don't worry. What goes on? My, my, my bad. I went long. <laughs> the Dolphins have only Just beaten wait. the Bucks once in Sorry. 30 years. The Dolphins have beaten the Bucks once in 30 years? <laughs> once in 30 years. It was 2009. Any guesses on the quarterback? For Miami? Sage Rosenfels. Uh, I'm going to say I'm gonna say it's Joey Harrington. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Chad Henney. Chad Henney. Uh, yeah. All right. Week. Eagles. In Charlotte, Panthers. What are we looking for? 60 seconds. G -g -g Go. Uh, Sam Darnold. Can he continue with that? You know, he's playing well, man. Mm -hmm. I didn't think when he was with the Jets that he would be able to play this well. And he's the leading rusher with quarterbacks and scoring touchdowns, running touchdowns, huh. right? I didn't think that Sam Darnold would be like that. He has weapons on the outside. I expect a great game from him. Eagles have to win this game. I said the same about Emmy. This is a playoff game. You don't go one and four. You can't do that. Like, this, there's been a lot to like about <laughs> Philly, except they came out and beat the Falcons week one and we said woo and then they haven't won since and they know it um Nick Sirianni give me some sort of boxing metaphor or something right here because the season is effectively over if you lose this weekend I'm Defense sorry is bad and I, and I think Carolina I needs to win this game mm. because they started off 3-0 and we did the celebration here on the show because they did it on a Thursday night against the Texans then they got their lunch handed to them against the Cowboys. You can't lose at home to an Eagles team that you are better than on paper, especially if we might see number 22 in the backfield. Christian McCaffrey yeah. might be out there. Hopefully. They got to win. If they're one of those teams and we're talking playoffs, Panthers have to win this game. Mm -hmm. No Chuba Hubbard mentioned any Chuba. No Chuba. I'm going with McCaffrey. Get the jersey. Chuba, a baller. They, of course, add Stephon Gilmore. He cannot play. He's on PUP. He can return and be on the field for them to help out their already good defense.